So here we are again, and I guess today we're talking about the differences or collecting perspectives in the box and out of the box, if yeah. you will. And I guess before we do that, you have something you want to do? Yeah, I want to do my shout out. Oh, here we go. No, all right, go ahead. I'm just messing with you. Um, today, I just want to give a shout out to a few new subscribers. Just say thank you for uh, subscribing to the channel. Dean Elliott, Indy Pollock 81, what's that? Cat Blager. Blager, I guess. Yeah, Cat so. Blager and LJ the Geek. LJ the Geek. So just uh, want to say thank you guys uh, for subscribing, uh, constantly leaving comments mm -hmm. and feedback, liking the videos. Greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. And did you want to show some pickups? Uh, yeah, some stuff sitting here. And this kind of ties in. You know, we're both like in the box collectors. But Teresa has picked up some more great stuff here recently. Got the Masters of the Universe 200X Snakes, Snake Men. Fisto. Yeah. And Fisto is a hard one to find. Uh, the classic and the original, they run pretty expensive. So this is the only Fisto that I have from the 200X. Mm -hmm. I don't have the classic or the original. So I'm trying to wait until I can find that super cheap. And sometimes I'll have luck with that. I think it's interesting that they gave him a completely prosthetic arm in yeah. 200x as opposed to just having a big glove like in the original series yeah and this one i'm really i really like these mecca four horsemen the sorceress mini statue mm -hmm. which is really nice and that's from series three they came out with five series and um and the artwork on, on yeah the, the artwork really on the nice back is, well. is really nice and this is the 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 sorceress from the 200x series yes and that sorceress Very actually looked a lot better than the original sorceress the original, I sorceress, thought. Only, the original sorceress had better thighs <laughs> nwo hollywood hulk hogan the hulk hogan you loved to hate <laughs> <laughs> the Hollywood eyes, the one that was made famous with WCW. Yeah. When he did, when he was riding with that, and an actual picture of the character on the back instead of just a pop depiction. Mm -hmm. And you have something else there. Yeah, the last one. The Wolfpack Sting in it's a GameStop red. Exclusive. GameStop exclusive. It doesn't have a GameStop sticker. No, not that one. Yeah, you got it. second hand. Oh, yeah. They forgot the sticker on this one. I guess. Because you get pictured here in the regular face paint. Yeah, he wore and the I red had sometimes. That one. But when he wore the red face paint, it was mm -hmm. easier to make out his facial features than when he wore the white. Think yeah, he looks a lot like Kane. If you saw the uh, Kane pop. A shorter, thinner Kane. Yeah. Oh, you mean the pop? Yeah. Yeah. He looks a lot like Kane. So what we're discussing is in the box or out of the box because there's a lot of back and forth about that sort of thing. Yeah, and we had um, a few subscribers to ask us about that and mm -hmm. they wanted us to talk on it. So we're talking on it. Yeah, and there's because there's a lot of people that have this attitude that are like, hey, you know, toys are meant to be played with and you're supposed to open them and you got to let them breathe and open the packages and stuff like that. And personally, we don't we don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I get a, a, a handful of examples here of things like a lot of the reason why you wouldn't want to open it is because of value. Now, there's an original Star Trek Nego Uhura from 19, what, 74? I think they made these. I'm trying to remember. But out of the box, I mean, packaged, she's worth like upwards of five times the value or more, still sealed and unpunched for the obvious reason that it's just rare. You know, people got the toys, they open them, and the more they open the packages, the fewer packages they are. And one of the reasons why I enjoy the packages is just because the artwork itself really blends into the pop culture 
you know, this is, you got this classic painting of Star Trek and the first wave or first series of Mego figures there. Mm -hmm. Another one that I really like is like the G.I. Joe, which I have in a protector here because this one is unpunched. Still has the original price tag, and that doesn't bother me on packaged items if it still has a price tag, as long as the price tag isn't huge, because that just gives you a little history on the, on the toy. Originally, somebody paid $5.29 for this. Mm. Now it's worth a lot more. <laughs> but G.I. Joe, even back in the day, all the way from the beginning, from 1964 when they started to now, has always been very prominent with the artwork. And this one is worth a huge difference, literally 10 times the value mm -hmm. of a loose figure versus the carded one because all the kids open these. Then you have something like uh, this NECA Terminator Terminator 2 uh, T-800. This one is where you start to blur the line because he is in this box and it's got this door but you can't really display it with the door open to really see or appreciate the figure you have to display the box then you can't see the toy yeah. unless you open the box with the NECAs though I mean you could cut the tape and then display the figure and if you ever wanted to put him back together you could put him back in here and then if you were able to reseal him and everything but you know people would know a collector would know that it had been opened and that would bring the value down this isn't worth like a fortune but the figure is only going to be worth it about half as much as the boxed example and we had just done a video talking about mystery minis and this is a, a WCF mini from Dragon Ball Z and God I can't remember his name but uh, it's not on the box isn't that the name Vados? Vados. He, he has like three or four different translations of his name oh. and so it, I'm a little confused I'm confused anyways mm -hmm. but uh, he this is sealed but at least you know who's in there but then you're just displaying a box with a picture of the character and these are, I mean, these don't even sell for the retail. This is 15 bucks mm. retail. It's like 14.95, but you can buy them a lot cheaper because I don't know. Yeah, but see, with Here. this one, and this goes back to what we were talking about on the last video with mystery minis, and what I was saying. If you display, if you don't take it out of the box, then mm -hmm. all you have is this box, and this is not even a nice box. At least with this one, you know who's in there. Well, yeah, you know who's in there, but, <laughs> but it's not regular nice mystery thing. mini boxes. They all have the same image on the front. Yeah, it, it, but yeah. it's not even a nice box to display. Like if if y'all saw the um, video I did of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I showed the kid robots and I showed the box. Yeah. The box is actually nice. The artwork was well done. It had a picture of who was in the box on the box. You know, and right now I have that displayed in the box, but that's one of the only ones that I do want to display out of the box. But because I don't have the space, they're in the box right now. But I'm fine with that because the box is nice. And then we saw a video um, last night of a person. He had the uh, kid robot uh, Ned Flanders. The, was, the Australian Funko Collector. Yeah, and that was a really nice box. And I would love to display that box because the artwork yeah they did a good job really kid nice. robot does it they're, they're thinking about that and mm -hmm. it's you know it's people that the companies that think about that you want to be able to see the whole toy mm -hmm. and it's got great artwork most people are not going to want to open this you remember yeah. most people who opened these were kids back in the day and then as adults came along we're like wow i wish i could still find that packaged and that's mm -hmm. what drives the price up Unless you're going to do something different, like uh, here's a Godzilla. This is a who made these? I forget. I think this is a Bandai 1999 Bandai. It says 2001 on there. That was the theater release because what they did was they had a bunch of these in different translucent colors, and you could only buy them in the theater in Japan mm -hmm. during the release of the film. 
and this is the brown one brown with some glitter in there but he's just got the hang tag on there and so I mean, they, they kind of have their finger on that whole concept okay you don't have to open it here you go yeah, this is open. how it is or like this one that I got which is from the Godzilla vinyl wars and this is very classic Japanese the way they do this where they put it in a cello bag <laughs> they put it in a bag because this is how they've all you know when you find Japanese like uh, um, Bullmark and other Popey and companies like that that made this stuff in the 60s and 70s they put it in a big bag and they would it would be in a hang tab but they only had them in Japan so finding them loose like if you found this guy loose and he had his smokestack still because this is hilarious this mm -hmm. is Hedora from um, Godzilla mm -hmm. and the the reference of the smokestacks if anybody's wondering why the hell he has chimney stacks here he walks up to the smokestacks mm -hmm. in the film and decides to have himself a smoke. So it's black smoke pouring out of the smokestacks, and he comes up and he's like, "Yeah, okay," <laughs> just starts sucking on them, which is hilarious. But uh, if you had this loose as opposed to in the bag, not too much of a price difference mm -hmm. because the cello bag isn't considered too important. Uh, usually, if somebody, a Japanese collector, a Japanese vinyl collector wants to display this out of the bag they'll get rid of the bag and keep the header card okay and just know. put it in another yeah. bag yeah and they don't and it's not that big of a of a deal to mm -hmm. them but you know as you can see or as most people probably know still having it sealed yeah makes a huge difference in the price point mm -hmm. there are other alternatives like this right here this is a hot toys um Rambo first blood first movie Sylvester Stallone Rambo and with with these types this is an early hot toys this is from like what 2006 I think 2006 I think that's right uh, hot toys yeah it says 2006 okay John Ram John Rambo and but the way that hot toys has done this and sideshow has done these types of figures you can open this, mm -hmm. and and it's like the clamshell in here is in layers, and you can lift them off and take everything out and display your figure, and if you want to, put the whole thing back together. So if you have a loose collection of Hot Toys or other 12-inch uh, or 1 6 scale figures like this, mm -hmm. you can take it apart and put it back together. And it shouldn't affect the value as long as you kept everything. All the pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing with taking things out of the box that have a lot of pieces. People lose those pieces because sometimes you have like weaponry or clothing or paperwork. Paperwork or something that goes along with it. And you'll find um, if you go to toy stores, they have the figure but not the accessories. So you don't have a complete item. Or if they packed it back up, they didn't keep all the packing material. A lot mm -hmm. of times they lose those little twisties yeah. that were that were in the packaging. I mean, it really, it, and all of it comes down to preference. Like, mm -hmm. I got these. I have a collection of, of these as well. That's and, nice. Yeah, and this is the Build-A-Figure, the Hulk Build-A-Figure that comes from the uh, Marvel Legends. And I got Marvel and DC Legends and others where you have to open the package in order to put the figure together mm -hmm. because there's a piece in each you know it could be like four five six seven eight different packages has one piece of a figure and you assemble it and you build it together and this is one of the you know more recent ones that I have because this has been out for um, almost a year I think since summer at least mm. these have been circulating and these build a figures usually have a, a fair value on them they can only be displayed loose right? because you have to open another figure to put it together. And I didn't do that. I get mine already together. Yeah, already put together because I can't open the packages. <laughs> I can't bring myself to do it. I just can't do it. Mm. And Warren does that too. Warren has, and I've talked about him before, Flippity from Roblox. Roblox. I always mess that up. He has a huge collection of loose items 
loose figures, mm -hmm. but he won't open them either. He'll find them loose. He um doesn't matter. He's got tons of Ninja Turtle stuff and Transformers and Master Legends. Universe. Yeah, Masters, Vintage Masters. He's not opening anything. He he uh he will track it down loose and display it that way. Yeah. Well, uh, and like I said before, my thing with um loose items is how you display it. Are you like this hot toy? How much how much is this for? Uh, uh, the Rambo. Roughly, roughly. Maybe three, three fifty. I need about three fifty. Three hundred dollars. <throat> You're gonna pay three hundred dollars for something, and then just throw it on a shelf, and you know it collects dust. You don't organize it well. You don't keep up with it. You don't maintenance it. So now it's like, okay, I spent three hundred dollars on this thing, and I and I treat it like a discarded rag <laughs> you yeah. know or like trash basically and i've seen that in some of these videos how people they have a huge collection and, it's and some nice. valuable stuff yeah. too and it's very nice but they don't take the time to really i mean and i'm not saying buy these super elaborate expensive oh, shelves. The cases and stuff yeah because yeah. i've seen some people with some very nice shelves the, the shelves that we have, we got them from Goodwill, OfferUp. We, we bought super cheap shelves and just wiped them down and, and clean it up. And these DVD slash CD shelves yeah. work really well because they're not deep. They're only like about, you know, mm -hmm. five inches deep. And so, because a problem that I, I really hate, and you see a little bit of that going on with the bookshelves, although I try not to, where am I? Right there. I try mm -hmm. not to get too carried away with it because it's deep. People will feel a need to fill it up. I can't do that. I'm only, you know, uh, a boxes in the back, you see, and then like a couple of displays of some figures in the front, maybe. Yeah. But you, people have a bookshelf and they'll put like five, six, seven figures deep and you can't tell what it is anymore after a while. Yeah, and I've seen the video and they're like hovering over it and you're looking at rows and rows and rows. And then and, it's dark yeah. and you can't tell what it is. And it's like, how can you enjoy it? if you got to try to look in between and i'm not saying that people that display their figures in the box keep theirs in any meter because i've seen people that have it in the box and the box is all dusty and the, the uh, window gets yellow because you put it out in the sun or yeah. in front of a window or something like that but my whole thing with collecting and i've made this argument before not just on videos, but I've told other people, if you're going to collect something, that means to you, it has value yeah. and it means something. If you pay 50 cent for it, it means something to you. So treat it like you spent a thousand dollars. And that's anything. I collect uh, bells. Some of them I bought for 25 cent because I liked it, but I treat it like I spent a hundred dollars for it because you keep it wiped down, you keep it neat, you keep it in the area, you display it, you show it. Like, wow, that how much you spent for that? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's just my big thing. That's a probably a nitpicky thing. But if you're gonna have something, treat it like it's worth something. Yeah, don't think about how much money you invested in it. Think about yeah. how much time and effort you invested in it. Yeah. And again, you don't have to uh like all of these shelves right here, we we bought um, Craigslist, Goodwill, stuff like that. Just yeah. wipe it down, Clarence. yeah. Real, you know, wipe it down really nice, and then display your figures or build a shelf. Like we have the video where uh, David built yeah, I made, made that uh, wall. something. So you know, that's my whole thing with collecting. Period. In the box, out of the box, just display it well be careful about where you have it don't have it someplace it's damp or you know or like if i can point one more time here you see these vinyls right here oh. those clap these are the classic like general mills and kellogg's vinyls and there's the three uh those snap, are the three crackle, snap and crackle and pop that's actually on the header on the video on the channel mm -hmm. um these are hard to find in decent shape loose because people when they got them they displayed them in their kitchen yeah, and they got gro they get really grody that way, and they get it like an oil residue on them from the cooking that's almost yeah. impossible to clean off. So a lot of yeah. times you find them yellow or like especially like I've got the uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I saw a video. The Pillsbury Doughboy ones that I have. Yeah. Sometimes people would display them in the box in the kitchen, and that cellophane that's because it's a really thin cellophane on those Pillsbury boxes mm -hmm. from the, like '74, I think they made those. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll never get that cellophane clean. You'd have to, you better off just tearing it off and throwing it away and just leaving it in the, in the cardboard inserts. Yeah. Just because it's a food item based toy <laughs> yeah. doesn't mean you have to put it in the kitchen, you know? And I saw a video a few weeks ago, this lady, she buys the, uh, cereal Funko Pops. And she displays hers in the kitchen. But if you go into anybody kitchen, that that's the first thing that I often, thought of. Like, oh. Yeah, if you cook often enough, you know, like some people maybe they don't cook often, so their kitchen stays clean. Even the moisture. It, it yeah, the up moisture, in the and when you fry stuff, the oils that are in the air, they get in, they collect on stuff. If you just look at your cabinets. They get a sticky residue on it from all of the oils and the grease and everything else that's in the air in your kitchen. So you got a collection of uh, toys or even your um, ceramic ware that you keep your, your flour and sugar and stuff in. That stuff gets a film on it. So it's going to get on your toys. Yeah, I mean, you can clean your kitchen up and, and control that, but you yeah. can't clean it off a of cardboard and cellophane. Yeah. It, it's after a while, it's going to start eating into it. Yeah, so, you know, a big thing, again, just keeping the stuff clean. So if one day you do want to sell it, like I bought a Masters of the Universe figure from, I can't remember, from somebody. Um, I got it. It was just caked with dust. I mean, I was able to get it off, but I'm just saying, you know, if you got to think, okay, maybe one day I might have to sell this or maybe I yeah. want to gift it down to someone. You want it to be in the best possible shape. So you wipe it down, you know, once a month or however often you just dust it off and, you know, just keep it organized. It. Yeah. Keep it, or, uh, keep it, keep, take care of it. Take care of it. Some of the stuff I like to display, like Don't I was smoke. saying. Don't smoke. Yeah, don't smoke. And watch out for the pets. We're lucky because Romeo doesn't touch anything. People yeah. ask about that. Watch out for the cat. Cat doesn't touch our stuff. No, He's he'll really, sniff around, but he doesn't. Really, touch really him. well mannered animal. Yeah. Um, is the the classic box art, mm -hmm. the pop culture box art, like uh, even this one. That's that's some great artwork. If we're on the Rambo here, it's too bad they can't show the figure and through this somehow like. Even if they had it cut away, like you see the uh, the Sean Cassidy I'm pointing to right here, Kenner Sean Cassidy um, from the Hardy Boys that I'm pointing to, oh, the red yeah. there next to the Terminator head. Yeah, I see it. How it's a header card, but it's got the figure, so you can see the artwork and the figure. Mm -hmm. I should have brought them down, but you know, you get the idea. At least that way, you can you have your option. Mm -hmm. this you feel almost compelled to tear apart because you can't do anything with the figure like that yeah and it's fun also to th there are times where it's fun to collect stuff loose like i have the classic gi joe french resistance fighter here he's complete he's got all of his other accessories in the little bag but you know got him on the stand and there is a huge market for vintage gi joe collectors who like to display complete loose mid condition figures like mm -hmm. like this one this one's in exceptional condition yeah and he has everything even the metal i know somebody out there is going to be like where's this french resistance metal hold on right there in the bag pins have never been bent still has the sticker on it but th that's uh you know a classic and when when you're dealing with much older items like mm -hmm. that it's okay if you find it loose you find it loose and display it, mm -hmm. but once again, who's going to open one to display a figure? Well, somebody will. Unless, you know what some people do, though, mm -hmm. is they'll find one in a, in a box or on a package that's completely trashed mm -hmm. so that they don't feel bad about opening it. Or, yeah, just so they won't have to spend the uh, top dollar for it yeah because the worse the packaging is the cheaper it is sometimes mm -hmm. depending on what it is it's happiness <laughs> you know what would make this really a cup of happiness 
If it's full of ice cream, because I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Happiness. <laughs> I got my ice cream in my. <laughs> I don't. You know what? Ha what happens? I I do put ice cream in a cup. And then Romeo comes along and he sits like right next to wherever I am. And, and if I, if I, if you look away, if you look away, him. he'll reach way out and he'll stick his paw in the loop and try to pull the cup towards him. Or oh, he'll stick his big head in His there. head won't fit in the cup. But he thinks it does. He thinks it does. Yeah, he does. A stat oh, one more thing. Statues. I think I have them. I'm oh. sitting there. Mm -hmm. um, statues would be easy enough if you kept the box and everything in it. You can display the statue and just keep it clean, and then you could put it right back together in the box. And most people who collect statues, it wouldn't bother them if it's not factory sealed, as long as everything is like in perfect condition. Yeah. One thing I I was thinking about too was looking at the the artworks because that's something I really like about uh, vintage toy items is the. Uh, is just some of it has really great artwork even the masters of the universe mm -hmm. the play sets and vehicles have great box art yeah and then on the back of the um action figures they usually has great art but usually not on the front mm -hmm. but this is what i was thinking about this is really not very good artwork is it <laughs> on the no. on the pops because it's just a sketch of the pop it doesn't pop. It's not dynamic. Like I'm going back to this again because I just love the vintage Joes. That artwork just jumps out. Yeah. That is fantastic yeah. artwork. It looks hand done. It is. It's, it's those. They're all. Um. They're all oil paintings. Yeah. Somebody. Somebody painted that, and then, and then they reduced it and used it for the cards. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they still do it that way, but they've done it since '64, as far as I know. Right. And what? Any other points? No other points. No. Well, I mean, obviously, it's all a matter of preference. Mm -hmm. But and also, obviously, if you have something and you open it, it's not going to be as worth as much as if you had left it sealed. And the difference in value can be considerable. Like I said, mm -hmm. the GI Joes, it's like you're talking about almost a a uh, ten times difference. For seat carded versus loose items, you know uh, that is one thing. Going back to this again, <laughs> that is one thing I can give Funko credit for. What is that? This is easy to open and reseal. Yeah. So as long as you kept it clean and you still had your box and everything, if you had this displayed loose, you could put it back in and seal it up. And if it if everything looks kosher, you're good to go. If uh, if you ever needed or wanted to sell it or trade it, so yeah. I can give them credit for that. Yeah. So, once again, it falls down to you. What do you think? Yeah, and it's all you know? about preference. Yeah, it is about preference. It's all about preference. If if that's what you want to do, that's great. Everybody has their own preference, their own likes and dislikes. Mm -hmm. It's pros and cons to everything. Um, we just happen to be in the box collectors, both of us. So, um, that's what, what we tend to do. And, again, there are... Out of all of the figures I have, it's only the kid robots that I do want to Did display you? outside of the box. And those can be opened and resealed. Yeah. Without and issues. if you saw the video, I, I showed them out of the box, but still in the plastic packaging. But that plastic packaging, the way that they have it made, it opens up because it, it folds up around the figure and it opens up and you can take the figure out and then you can put it back in there and seal it back up. Yeah. So. They did a good job with that. I guess they thought ahead and they, they they were mindful of that. So that was good. Just not with their mystery figures. They yeah. do mystery minis. <laughs> yeah, because their mystery uh no, it comes in bags because that guy Well, it's I a think, box it's a bag in a box. Right. So So you get a bags. box like this and then it has a bag with the figure in it. Sealed up. Mm -hmm. Don't forget there's a contest. Oh, so, one thing I want to say about that contest, um, what? I said this about the last contest and actually did a video on it. I don't know if I'll do a video on it, but, um, okay, it, you, you have to be a subscriber. Yes. If I can't find your name on the subscriber list and you know how to get to the subscriber list. Yeah. Because cause what I'll do is like the day before 
or that day, the day the, the contest ends, I'll look on all of the comments and, and write your name down. And then I can pair it against the um, subscriber list. Yeah, so watch out. You could be overlooked. Yeah, so that's all I'm saying. Because um, you, you can block your view of the subscriber. You know, if you want to be in a... a a dark subscriber, I guess. Just take the, <laughs> the just take that off until after the, the 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 contest is over, so that I can write your name down. Because if I don't see your name on that subscriber list, um, I won't write it down. And if you want to know if you're on there, just you know, send me a message, and I'll say, yeah, you're on the subscriber list. Okay. So, so if you to find out what what the Oh, it's not even a contest it's a giveaway. It's a giveaway. But yeah, yeah. I know we, we keep say contest, that. but Same it's a giveaway. Same yeah. difference. The you you've got to um, like and comment on that video mm -hmm. that you want in on the in on the contest in which uh, I'm still doing it in on the giveaway in which giveaway you want because the it's There's split three. into three. Yeah. And I'll put a link to that video down below. And so. Please like, share, and subscribe. Yep. Hopefully, you found the commentary interesting. Mm -hmm. So, like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you again soon. So, on Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. It's tomorrow, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's tomorrow. So, happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there that share, I mean, that, you know, participates. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Thanksgiving, happy mm -hmm. Black Friday to oh, you that are going out there and shopping on Black Friday. <laughs> oh my God. Happy Black Friday. We'll do a whole other video on Black Friday. But uh, <laughs> tell us what you got on Black Friday. Yeah, really. We should we should do a video. I know there's a couple of exclusives that are supposed to be floating around, but I haven't really heard much. I haven't heard they're supposed to do a, a Black Friday. I know Funko does a Black Friday release. I only Funko heard does it like everything. two or three uh, at a Hot like Topic, but it's nothing that I want. Metallic R2 D2 or something. More Star Wars. Yeah. At least you recognize that R2 D2 is part of Star Wars. Who can't when it is? It's out everywhere. <laughs> well, the mo no movie's coming out. No. In well, whatever. All right. So, yeah, please like, share, and subscribe. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it, and we hope to see you again soon. So, see you later. <laughs> <laughs>